latest ad to hit the airwaves features retired Major General Paul Eaton. He was in charge of reforming Iraq security forces in 2003 and 2004. President Bush says he listens to his military commanders. Well, Mr. President, I was one of those commanders, and you weren't listening when we warned you of the dangers we'd face invading Iraq. Now our military is overcommitted, and America is less secure. Mr. President, you're being told we need serious diplomacy, not escalation, and you're still not listening. If the president won't listen, Congress must. Ex-generals rarely speak out that forcefully against the White House during a time of war. Let's hear from retired Major General Paul Eaton right now. Thanks so much for joining us, sir. Paul, thank you very much. Our pleasure. So if the president didn't listen to you as we were ramping up this war, what makes you think he's going to listen to you now? Paul, this is an effort to, uh, to get the president to pay attention to other voices in Congress and to surge diplomatically, as well as the military uh, effort that is underway right now. Absent uh, for this last six years is an effort to really go after a diplomatic campaign plan to bring all the actors in the region to bear on the problem. Isn't this also, also about, this though, trying to get Democrats elected in districts where Republicans are very vulnerable, given the strong opposition to this war by the American public? Not at all. This is an effort. This is a bipartisan approach, if you will. It may not sound that way, but we're going after people who might be able to influence this president, who may be able to walk into his office and say, Sir, Mr. President, we need your help here, and we need to adapt the strategy that you have underway right now. And we have got to surge this thing diplomatically, and we need to grow the armed forces to meet the demands that this president has placed in the realm of foreign policy. General, I'm having a hard time understanding how you can say that this is not about getting Democrats elected when this very group that's putting these ads on the air, VoteVets.org, uh, has said officially in documents that 93 percent of its donations have in fact gone to Democratic campaigns and to Democratic political action committees. Do you fear you're getting used here? Paula, two things. One, we're a long ways off from the election. We have an immediate problem right now to fix the strategy so that we can conclude this war successfully. Now, Vote Vets was stood up, was established, to support veterans running for office. What is remarkable is that the vast majority of the veterans running for office are running on Democratic tickets. And what is remarkable about that is if you go back historically, you would suggest that they would have been running as Republicans. Historically, the military has been very pro-Republican Party, very pro-GOP. The abuse and the devastating impact of this administration's policies and failure to maintain a viable military in the face of very considerable load, 15-month tours for the Army, that's excessive in an administration that has steadfastly refused to grow the army to meet the demands that the uh, wars in Iraq and Afghanistan have imposed upon us. Let me read to you something that an evangelical pastor had to say about you. His name is Rick Scarbell, uh, Scarborough, and uh, he has been really uh, attacking you, and this is exactly what he had to say. Generals John Batiste, John Eaton, and Wesley Clark should be ashamed of what they are doing. No amount of suicide bombers could wreak so much havoc upon our military establishments as the words of these men, the effect of which is to communicate to our enemies to be patient and you will win. Generals certainly ought to know better. Are you emboldening the enemy with these ads? We have a very bold enemy. And let me put myself in context. I have two sons who are soldiers, one in Afghanistan as we speak. One served in, in Iraq uh, while I was there for 15 months. I just buried my missing in action father, lost in Vietnam, remains identified last December. I know all about the impact that this has on soldiers of all ranks. And the feedback that I'm getting from soldiers of all ranks is very positive. We are advocates for the United States Army, advocates for the United States Marine Corps. We want these forces grown, and we want this war fought intelligently. General Petraeus has said it's not just a military war. It is a requirement that we get the State Department, that the Secretary of State engage 
politically and diplomatically inside Iraq and outside of Iraq to discipline this process and to get other players involved today on the diplomatic table. Would this, General, very quickly in closing, be a more disciplined process in your mind if more Democrats are elected in this upcoming election? I won't speak to the election, Paula. The American people will all sort that out in uh, November of 2008. Right now, I need the president to focus diplomatic efforts in the region to help General Petraeus get the al-Maliki government disciplined and on timeline and to get the other players in the region to play diplomatically as well as the, the negative impact that Iran, Syria have on the problem. General Paul Eaton, we really appreciate your time tonight. Thanks so much for joining us.